video is about the ultimate sin. Quick disclaimer, um, I think that Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman are both awesome albums. Even Bark at the Moon is good. But this is the one that got me in the Ozzy Os into Ozzy Osbourne. It was summer of 1986 and throughout the spring and summer of 1986 I go down to my friend Earl's house. Um, he lived in a down the street in a trailer park. It's not the white trash trailer park you're thinking of. This was a trailer park that was just filled with senior citizens, a lot of old people. So it was kind of boring, but very good because it allowed me to, to mow lawns for the older people and to earn money to buy tape cassettes like Jewish Priest, Iron Maiden, and Ozzy Osbourne. Um, so this is the one I got into. Um, when, when I went down, we used to go down to my friend Earl's house, we would always be watching wrestling. And every single time between the commercials, during the commercials, we would change to MTV. MTV was a kick-ass station back then. So we were watching MTV and we would watch the wrestling in between. And sometimes we would just be like, you know what, forget it, keep it on MTV. They were just showing really cool videos like somewhere in t wasted years by iron maiden turbo lover by Juice priest and of course lightning strikes of the ultimate sin off of ozzy osbourne's ultimate sin album this is a really cool album. it's an underrated album some of the younger fans have discovered it and think it's cool um i knew who ozzy was at the, at the time but right during this album release is when i really got into ozzy and took notice and you know watched the videos it was just an amazing, it's an amazing album. It's, don't want to say it's glam rock. It's not like really heavy, you know, per se. Ozzy's stuff was really never insanely heavy anyways, but you know what I mean. By 86, it was like a lot of heavier stuff. Ozzy kind of kept to his kind of same writing formula, I should say Bob Daisley. Um, he kept the same kind of like formula and stuff like that. You know, it was heavy rock or, you know, heavy metal, regular metal. And um, Jakey Lee, this is Jakey Lee's second album. It was awesome. Phil Susanna's on it. Randy Castillo was playing drums. It was Randy Castillo's first time on, on any album. First thing with Phil Susanna. He's gone through so many other big bass players and stuff like that. And several drummers, you know. From Tommy Albridge to, to Randy Castillo and then other drummers in between here and there. But Jakey Lee just had something special about him. And he, the riffs that he wrote and the music that he did so just the songs on here are awesome this is not really specifically an album review this is just me reminiscing about 1986 and what i remember about this album and when it came out it was an awesome album um i could see how and why older black sabbath fans or people who have been fans from uh, of ozzy since the 70s to late 70s or whatever, early 80s, heard this and were just like, what the heck? You know, he doesn't even, Ozzy doesn't even like it, but one of the main reasons why Ozzy doesn't like this album is because, it's because of his image. Yeah, his image was a little off and weird. He was wearing the eye, eyeliner, makeup stuff. He had those black and yellow robes and the blue robe and the glitter and all that stuff. And his hair was kind of permed and wavy or whatever it was kind of it was kind of weird and odd considering what he looked like before and how he was before he should have stuck to that the songs would have stood out the songs would have stood on their own and the awesome songs and that what makes this album awesome so i had this shirt in 1986 i mowed lawns for older people and it was a really cool album and it was just the song structure on here you know the chorus the the verse the bridges the just the guitar parts and everything even the drums everything was like recorded really good by the mid 80s there was just a little bit of upgrades in recording technique compared to like 79 to 1980. not that specifically matters because all the other stuff is like great too if you like it you like it ozzy himself doesn't even like this one but yeah that's all right um, I can understand how, why, like I said, his thing with the image that he didn't like, but mediocre songs, I'm like, what the heck is he talking about? Bark at the Moon and the Ultimate Sin were awesome. So were the other ones. So this album was just that kind of, I'll, I guess maybe a transition. And this was kind of, he sold out image-wise. He kind of 
follow the crowd of what other people were doing. And then, of course, by 1987, you know, he was like, all right, enough of this crap, you know. Because during his, the videos and the other one for the No Rights for the Wicked, he um, just looked less glam. It was by 88, so it was better. You know, glam was kind of fading out at that point. In 1987, I was kind of irritated with Ozzy because I'm like, I read in the magazine that he fired Jake Lee, and I'm like, jeez, what the heck's he going to do now? What a freaking idiot. I knew Jake Lee was on the last two albums, Bark the Moon and this one, and I was just like, well, what is he doing? That's just, just a stupid move. But, answer to Ozzy questions, um, whatever happened to Ozzy Oil? Was Ozzy Oil real, or was that just in the video? Number two, a lot of people say this, a lot of younger people say this, and, and it's cool that, look here from here, a lot of younger people have gotten into this album, and that's really cool, you know, Cameron Cooper plays some of the Ozzy stuff, and there's younger people that listen to this and really like it. So, the younger people, a lot of younger fans and even probably some older fans have asked the question, how come Ozzy doesn't stutter in his songs? So here's one of the here's one of the main reasons why, from what I know, what I know about people who have stuttered. When people are stuttering and they don't know what to say, and it's a nervous reflex, and they s s start stuttering. That's why you don't hear c c crazy train and all that other stuff. But you'll hear it in Devil's Daughter. But I think he's just fooling around there. So the thing is, when they're trying to think of something to say they will stutter. But if it's song lyrics written out and he knows exactly what he's going to say, he knows the lyrics and just spits them right out. So therefore, that's why, to answer a lot of people's questions, that's why Ozzy doesn't stutter in songs. I know even sometimes people are, whether they're questioning it or they're kind of joking around about it. But... Like I said, Devil's Daughter. Did he did he do that on purpose, or was he just screwing around? People have done that before, just made all kinds of other weird sounds and stuff like that with their voice when you're singing. So anyways, this was an awesome album. It was weird because Randy Rhodes playing on the first two albums, Jakey Lee on the next two, and then for Randy Castillo, he, this was his first album, and then the second album was No Worth for the Wicked, so we got to play with Jakey Lee and in Zach Wilde. And then I think even Randy, yeah, Randy Castillo is on um, No More Tears. So counting No Rest for the Wicked. And then even No More Tears, the first five or six albums were just his best ones. As far as the solo stuff goes, his Black Sabbath stuff is a whole different story. That's good, cool, and neat. I've always been a type of Ozzy fan that I, I gravitate to more his solo stuff. I like his solo stuff better. It's heavier, it's better guitar-wise, not taking anything away from Tony and Iommi and Geezer Butler and Bill Ward and stuff like that. Those guys were cool and that's where it started. Once again, to conclude the video, The Ultimate Sin, it's the ultimate album. There's so many wicked songs on here. Killer of Giants, oh, it's a really cool riff. There's just a lot of cool riffs on here. If you don't know this album, check it out. If you have this album, tape, CD, whatever, Tell me when you got it in the comments below and tell me what year was it when you discovered it. Thanks. Tell me of course was the ultimate sin. This